Hi, this is Dennis with Cybercraft. Today we're going to take the Isaka Caesar quiz. In the past, we took the Isaka Sism quiz. So today we're going to try the Isaka Caesar quiz. The 10 question quiz. This is the official quiz on isaka.org. Uh, you can practice this one yourself. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to explain my thought process going through the quiz. Hopefully, this helps you in your Isaka Caesar exam prep and even for prepping for other Isaka certifications. I think it's a good quiz. The Sism one was pretty challenging. We did well there. Let's see how we do on this one. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's try it out. Okay, an audit charter. Now it's very important when you approach these questions to read the question, read the answers, and then read the question again, and try not to jump on any one answer. You wanna read all of the information first. Don't bring any other information from outside the question. Just look at the question for itself. So an audit charter should be dynamic and change to coincide with the changing nature of technology and the audit profession. Clearly state audit objectives for and the delegation of authority to the maintenance and review of internal controls. Document the audit procedures designed to achieve planned audit objectives. Outline the overall authority, scope, and responsibilities of the audit function, right, the audit charter. Now, my understanding of the audit charter is that it's a high level document designed to provide overall guidance, usually to explain who is in charge of what. So just like a charter would provide authority to any individual or group, uh, kind of like a constitution for a country. So I think of these, outline the overall authority, scope, and responsibilities of the audit function makes the most sense. Okay. IS Auditor finds a small number of user access requests that have not been authorized by managers through the normal predefined workflow steps and escalation rules. The IS Auditor should... Okay, so we find some requests, and what I like to do is I like to re-read the question or re, um, rephrase the question in plain English. Sometimes these questions have a lot of junk in them, a lot of extra words, and I'm going to look for the key phrases and kind of rephrase it using those key phrases. So an I, information security auditor uh, finds, or systems auditor, finds a small number of user access requests have not been authorized by managers through the normal predefined workflow steps and escalation rules. Okay, so we have access request not authorized outside of normal steps and rules. Okay, so what should the auditor do next? Perform additional analysis, report the problem to the audit committee, conduct a security risk assessment, recommend that the owner of the identity access management system fix the workflow issues. Okay, so we found small number of requests that have not been authorized. So now at this point, we have to think how the auditor would perform this. The auditor at this point doesn't have a lot of information on, on what this is. And the auditor's job is just to assess and report. Uh, report this to the audit committee could be an answer but performing additional analysis would give us more information. Conduct a security risk assessment. Not sure if that would be it. Recommend that the owner of the identity access management system fix the workflow issues. I mean, we're not sure if this is, if this is a problem with the workflow, though we do see that these have been authorized, uh, that have been not been authorized by managers. So, Perhaps there is a problem, but I think what we need to do is find more information before we can do anything else. So if this was, if we had a clearly defined problem here, this is kind of vague, then I think we can recommend reporting the problem. But I think it'd probably be best to perform additional analysis at this point, because we don't have a lot of information to go off of here. And again, this is worded a little vaguely. So I'm going to go with A. I could be wrong on that one. Okay, IS Auditor observes that Enterprise has outsourced software development to a third party that is a startup company. To ensure that the enterprise's investment in software is protected, which of the following should be recommended by the IS Auditor? Due diligence should be performed on the software vendor. A quarterly audit of the vendor facility should be performed. There should be a source code escrow agreement in place. A high penalty clause should be included in the contract. Okay, so we need to understand the steps here. 
and I'm going to rephrase this. IS Auditor observes that enterprise has outsourced software development. So since they, this is important, has outsourced software development, they've already done this to a third party. Now, the fact that it's a startup, it tells us the maturity level of the organization is not very high, but they don't really think that's too relevant here. To ensure the enterprise investment in software is protected, which of the following should be recommended by the auditor? So what we need to do to ensure that the enterprise investment in software is protected. So we need to protect the investment in software. What do we do to protect the investment in software? That's basically the whole question. So to do that, I think due diligence should be performed. That's the sh ship has already sailed there uh, because they've already outsourced. Quarterly audit, that could help prevent or help us determine uh, things that the company is doing in the future. This would directly protect the source code, an escrow agreement, source code escrow agreement. A high penalty clause should be included in the contract. I mean, the contract has already been signed. So I think we should have a source code escrow agreement. Though an agreement might already be signed as well, but this could help. There's no reason we can't put an agreement in place now. I think this is the correct answer here because we want to protect the investment in software. Enterprise risk management or enterprise risk appetite is best established by, okay, uh, the chief legal officer, security management, the audit committee, or the steering committee. Risk appetite best established by, now this is, the risk appetite needs to align with the business needs of the organization and the entity that would have the best understanding of the business needs of the organization of these would be the steering committee because that would include key stakeholders. So I think the steering committee is definitely the right answer here. All right, when identifying an earlier project completion time, which is to be obtained by paying a premium for earlier completion, for early completion, the activities that should be selected are those whose sum of activity time is the shortest, that have zero slack time, that give the longest possible completion time, whose sum of slack time is the shortest. Okay, so if a, a sum, okay, what are we doing here? Identify, when identifying pro, early project completion time, which is to be obtained by paying a premium for early completion. Okay, so we wanna complete a project earlier by paying more money, got it. The activities that need to be selected, what would we select to complete first, basically? So we, need, we would want to complete projects that don't have any wiggle room, that's slack time, because those projects, uh, there's no additional time that could be saved. So those projects would relate to the critical path. And I think that's basically, we need to understand that for our understanding of this question. So what project would, what activity would be on the critical path? Now, Activities on the critical path don't have any slack time, so I want to say B. The sum activities is the shortest. The sum of activity time is the shortest. That doesn't, that's not a good thing to save on because those projects are going to complete sooner. So this is definitely not the right answer. Uh, it could give the longest possible completion time. Then that doesn't necessarily mean that we would save the most time completing those because if those projects had, had slack time, then that's not that wouldn't help us here because we can uh, save time with the slack time. Whose sum of slack time is the shortest? Well, if it has zero slack time, then it's definitely going to have the shortest. So this is obviously a better answer than this. So I, I do think it's B. And uh, this would be the projects that have or the activities that would be on the critical path. I think that's correct there. All right, IS Auditor is assigned to audit a software development project, which is more than 80% complete, but is which as an overrun time of 10%, and cost by 25%. And there's a train leaving from New York going 60 miles an hour. <laughs> okay, which of the following actions should the IS auditor take? Okay, report that the organization not have effective project management. Okay, well, this is, honestly, this is not a very large over, overage. So this, we should be able to do that. We recommend the project manager be changed. I don't think we have enough information for that. Review the IT governance structure. Maybe that doesn't quite relate to the project. Review the conduct of the project in the business case. All right, let me read the question one more time. ISO auditor is assigned to audit a software development project, 
it's 80% complete, has overrun time by 10%, cost by 25%. So it's a little over time and budget. Which of the following action should the IDIS auditor take? I think the, of these, review the conduct of the project is the most appropriate. Because we're taking a look at how well the project is running. And the business case helps us justify if there is an overage, is that if the business case is strong enough, the overage won't really matter. So I think this is correct. A programmer maliciously modified a production program to change data and then restored the original code. Which of the following would most effectively detect the malicious activity? Maliciously modified a production program to change data, then restored the original code. Okay, so we're changing data within the production program and then we're restoring the code. So the code is basically unchanged, but the data would be changed. So comparing source code, that shouldn't help here because the code is unchanged. Reviewing system log files, log files would help uh, identify steps taken by the programmer. Comparing object code, the code is not changed, so that shouldn't help. Reviewing executable and source code integrity. Now, normally integrity checks help, but the code is not changed here. So that means that these three, or these three, Alpha, Charlie, and Delta, wouldn't help. So I think the log files would be the correct answer here. And this is similar to uh, attacks on source code that we have seen recently in the news. So I think system log files should help us here. All right. Which of the following would best ensure continuity of a wide area network across the organization? Okay, wide area network across the organization. Uh, wide area network is usually, that's the basically the internet, okay? Um, though a larger organization, yeah, this would be access to the internet continuity of a wide area network across the organization, depending on the size of the organization too. Uh, the organization may have its own WAN. Uh, Built-in alternative routing, that, that does provide redundancy. Complete full system backup daily, that doesn't help us with availability of the network. Repair contract with a service provider, that does help, but we're relying on a third party. A duplicate machine alongside each server. Now that provides redundancy for the servers, but that doesn't really help us with our network redundancy. So which of the following would best ensure continuity of a wide area network across the organization? We're looking for redundancy mechanisms for our network. An alternative routing path would definitely help. So I think this is the right answer. This would help availability of individual systems. This is relying on a third party. It would provide redundancy, but it's not as good as alternative routing. And duplicate machine that provides availability for each server. I think it's A. Okay. An IS auditor is reviewing, okay, the question took a little longer to load there. An IS auditor is reviewing the physical security controls of a data center, notices several areas for concern. Hmm, which of the following areas is the most important? The emergency power off button cover is missing. Okay, that's fine. Uh, not really important. Scheduled maintenance of the fire suppression system was not report, performed, that's pretty important. There are no security cameras inside the data center. That, that could be, that's important. Uh, I don't think it's as important as this, because this helps with safety. The emergency exit door is blocked. Okay, now that's, that's a critical failure. Uh, you, that directly affects health and human safety. This one does too, because fires can get out of control, especially if the fire system is not working correctly, but this one is absolutely more critical. If individuals cannot leave the data center in the event of emergency, that's a problem. So. In matters of health and human safety, that is always going to be the most critical concern. So this is definitely the correct answer there. All right, which of the following choices best helps information owners to properly classify data? Understanding of technical controls that protect data, uh, possibly. Training on organizational policies and standards. Now that's understanding our, our organization and our business case that that could be it use of an automated data leak prevention tool that doesn't help us classify the data uh well possibly 
the, but we're looking at the owners. The owners need to classify the data. They need to determine how the data is going to be used and understanding which people need to access the data. Okay, that could help and that does help our understanding, but that's not as helpful as understanding the purpose of the data. Uh, what is the data going to be used for? So this would be after the fact, after we have done the classification, we would use a tool to understand that. So I think the training on our policies and standards would be the best way to understand our business needs. So I think that's correct. I could be wrong. Okay, let's, okay, we got to do this. We did this for the CISA or the SISM too. All right, and if you guys have any questions about this or if you're looking for audit training, please don't hesitate to reach out, info cybercrafttraining.com. I read all of your emails. I know you, you guys send me a lot of messages, but I do read them all. So uh, thank you very much for sending me your messages. I do like hearing from you guys. So if you do have any questions, you're looking for CISA training, you're looking to get your ISACA certifications or any certification, you know, email me here, info at cybercrafttraining.com. Be happy to help you out. Let's see. All right, so let's see how we did. Did that work? Okay, it did. Okay, hey, 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 all right, cool. So we did well here. All right, let's see the explanations. All right, great job, your knowledge. Okay, we're, we're good, we're a strong start. Few steps away from getting our CISA. Well, thank you. Uh, Audit Charter should, yep, outline the scope and authority. I thought that was a pretty straightforward question. That's basically a definition of an audit charter. Finds a small number of access requests that have not been authorized. Okay, so we, what does it say? I need to perform substantial testing, additional analysis, to determine why processes are not working before making any recommendations. If the, we need to determine if the issue was caused by managers not following procedures or a problem with the workflow or a combination of two. I think that's appropriate. I was, I thought this was a tricky question. Uh, so I'm glad we picked the right one there outsourced escrow agreement. I thought this was a pretty solid choice here. Helps protect investment software. Uh, the steering committee. This was a, just basically a definition of the steering committee. Zero slack time. A critical pass activity is longer than that for any other path through the network. This path is important because if everything goes as schedules at length gives the shortest possible completion time for the overall project. Activities on the critical path becomes candidates for crashing. Uh, activities on the critical path have zero slack time. Okay, so this was the key thing that gave it away for me. If activities have zero slack time, they're on the critical path and you always want to be uh, targeting the critical path if you want to save time. So that's what really gave it away for me. IS Auditor is assigned to an audit software development. Okay, review the conduct of the project. Yeah, I think that's pretty fine. This is not, this is pretty good, honestly, for a project to be only 10% over cost and uh, or runtime and 10% cost by 25%. This one, log files. Reviewing a log file is the only trail that may provide information of the unauthorized activity in the production library. And I think that's right because the code was never changed essentially. So the code would pass integrity checks. Which of the following would best ensure continuity of WAN? Routing. Uh, alternative routing would ensure the network would continue. And then yes, Life safety is always highest priority. That's absolutely true. Okay, this is correct. Uh, while implementing data classifications, most essential the organization policy standards are understood by the owner, user or custodian of the data, so it would be classified. Okay, so good. So great job. I'm glad we got that right. If you're interested in taking this quiz, check the link in the description. But I hope this is helpful for you, learning for your CISA. If you're interested in, in accredited ISACA CISA training, Head on over to cybercrafttraining.com. All of our courses, our, our self-paced courses and our instructor-led classes are accredited ISOC instruction. You're gonna get the official ISACA review manual and questions, answers, explanation database when you sign up for our training. So if you're looking to get your uh, CISA, sign up with us. Our live classes have a first time pass guarantee, so you get your voucher and a second voucher if you don't pass on your first try. So if you're looking to get your CISA, sign up with us, but I hope this is helpful for you guys. Uh, best of luck on your exams and have a great day.